So exactly what is this trust going to mean for Whitney's 19-year-old daughter, Bobby Christina? With me in New York, family attorney Vicki Ziegler. Also with me in New York, HLN host Jane Velez Mitchell. Great to see you both. Now, Showbiz and I did confirm that a judge approved all of the details of this trust today. And I can tell you, Whitney's daughter will get 100% of her mom's fortune. That means Bobby Christina is getting an estimated $20 million. That's in cash, real estate, cars, and jewelry. It's going to be distributed over the course of about a decade. The first payment not coming till she turns 21. She'll get another chunk of the assets when she turns 25. The rest will be distributed when she turns 30. Some people have said it could be trouble for Bobby Christina if she were to come into a fortune all at once because of her reported past drug abuse. So that leads to our showbiz flashpoint. Is this the best way to hand over Whitney's enormous fortune? To me, Jane, this makes perfect sense. It was shockingly sensible, AJ. I expected something maybe a little yeah. kooky. But the fact is that this is a very well thought out will that's been in place for decades, and it does space out the money. I think Bobby Christina really has to worry now about people glomming onto her, also jealousy within her own family yeah. for people who weren't left money and people who are going to try to exploit her given that she's only 19. Yeah, and I think it's really important to point out, as you did, that Whitney's will was written before her divorce from Bobby Brown. This happened back in the 90s, and it was last revised when they were still married. He is even still mentioned in it as a beneficiary in case Bobby Christina Christina were to pass away, standard stuff for a will. Right now, Bobby Brown doesn't seem to be interested in fighting for Whitney's money at all. But Vicky, if he changes course, mm -hmm. could it actually open up a big battle for Whitney's money? Or he doesn't really have a claim. They're not married. End of story. He's pretty much done. Usually the law says that if you want to file a caveat 10 days after the will's been probated, probated if somebody thinks they have a stake or a claim, they do that. Nobody's done that. So I don't think that's going to be the problem. The bigger problem is, is Bobby Christina going to be OK? Is she going to be sane enough to handle the money when she receives it. We saw what happened to Britney Spears and what happened. Her father got a conservatorship of, yeah. of, of over her and her money. So that's the question really. And I think the trust is the best advice Whitney Houston got honestly, during her marriage to Bobby Brown, because it's quite strange that she didn't leave anything to him before they got divorced, and she left everything to her daughter. And I think that Bobby Christina has smart people around her, not the least of which Sissy mm -hmm. Houston, her grandmother, who will hopefully take mm -hmm. the steps, the proper steps, to make sure that this money, all of these assets are handled properly. Mm -hmm. And Bobby Christina, I think, is going to be hearing mm -hmm. all of the calls out there from people right. like us saying, <laughs> be careful. So hopefully, yes. look, th these stories, we've seen them happen before, and it goes mm -hmm. so wrong. Hopefully, that won't be the case here. I must talk about this other battle that's making news tonight over Bobby Christina's first TV interview since her mom's death. Bobby Chris, Whitney's brother and sister-in-law, sat down with Oprah. This is a new interview set to air on Sunday. This is a month to the day after Whitney died. Here's the big debate that's going on tonight. A lot of people are saying, you know what, this interview is just way too soon for Whitney's daughter to be putting herself out there like that. Jane, what do you think? Is it too soon? In a way, I kind of feel like if it's cathartic for her, if there's stuff she wants to get off her chest, what's wrong with it? Well, in her mind, it may not be so much television as it is talking to Oprah. This is a woman she trusts. She feels a level of comfort and safety with. So if there is that cocoon of safety, integrity, and honesty, and I think that Oprah would be the best person if an interview like this is to happen, to be conducting that interview, it might be a catharsis for her. Yeah, and to be clear, she's already done the interview. It's airing on Sunday, but I also would say that Oprah Winfrey, being sensitive to the family, sensitive to the late Whitney, wouldn't put something mm -hmm. like this on the air if she felt in any way it was not the right thing to do. Well, it really depends on where Bobby Christina is at right now. If she is using, and I have no information that she is, then, then she's in a danger zone and she needs to take care of herself and not do television. Well, We'll see what happens after the weekend. We'll be talking about it. Jane, Vicky, great to see you both. Thanks so much. We move on to... Welcome back to Showbiz Tonight. I'm AJ Hammer in New York with a desperate feud. Yeah, things are really starting to heat up inside a Los Angeles courtroom over Desperate Housewives star Nicolette Sheridan's wrongful termination battle. Now, Sheridan says she was fired for accusing her boss of hitting her. Her boss, the show's creator Mark Cherry, denies her claims and calls her a nightmare on set. Now we're learning more about an onset battle with Nicolette's co-star, Terry Hatcher. So 
who's winning this legal war. Joining me in New York, attorney Vicki Ziegler, and from Hollywood, there he is, soap star Patrick Muldoon, who is back, starring on Days of Our Lives. Great to have you both here. Let's talk about this trial, because it's getting more dramatic than the show itself, if you ask me. Desperate Housewives creator Mark Cherry just testified about this incident where he was called to the set because of some kind of a problem between Nicolette Sheridan and Terry Hatcher, and he said that the actresses were furious with each other and that Sheridan told him Hatcher was the meanest woman in the world. Vicky, it's all very dramatic, but what kind of effect could this have on Sheraton's case? Could it hurt it? Well, the, me the queen of mean really doesn't, you know, make that the wrongful termination happened. I mean, that's a, just having a bad reputation. Did she, she do something to violate the contract? That's really the question that would go part and parcel with the termination um, for the argument that actually she was actually terminated properly. So character doesn't play as much into it in these kinds Absolutely of cases? Absolutely not. All right, well, let's talk about reputation yeah. and the onset friction. <laughs> Patrick, you're an actor. You've been on so many sets. I'm sure you've seen a lot of friction between co-stars. Does this kind of battle surprise you or would you say it is pretty common to see these onset feuds going on, particularly on the really super big network shows like that? Well, you know, some producers and some directors actually like to have, if there's drama behind the scenes, sometimes it's a good thing if it plays out in the, uh, once you hit the set. Yeah. But the problem is, is once that costs you time, once you hit the set and there's diva situations where people aren't coming to set, that time is money and money is time, and that is never a good thing. So, yeah, and, and, um, and one of the contentions always was that, look, she was written off the show because of, uh, of the plot changing directions and also because of financial concerns for whatever reasons. Now, Mark Cherry also claims that Sheridan wasn't professional on the set, saying she was late, money, she wasn't prepared, money. Patrick, yes. we know how important reputation is in Hollywood. How much do you think that kind of testimony, whether it's true or not, can actually damage N Nicolette's reputation in the business? Well, it can be incredibly damaging because, um, you know, like we say, time is money and, and money is time once you hit that set. So uh, if, um, you know, a producer is not going to hire you if they think that you're going to be unprofessional, we all have to come to play you know, once somebody says action. And if there's drama behind the scenes, that's got to stop at that at that juncture. So can it be damaging? Absolutely. Yeah, you don't want word getting out that you're difficult to work with, particularly when you're out of work, I would say. A and right now, she's <laughs> not on a big show. All right, great insight there. Patrick Muldoon, thank you so much. Vicki Ziegler, thank you as always. And make sure you check out Patrick on Days of Our Lives. Great to have him back on NBC. Thanks again. Well, we must talk about Jessica.